Today's Tuesday, March 14th, 2023, and in today's video, I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 44, and then look at some pictures of a really cool old world building that used to exist in Texas, and what do you know, it was burnt down, and another cool building in Nashville, and then look at a little bit of Civil War stuff. And yeah, that's it. So let me get into this. There is one interesting thing in this chapter that I'll point out and talk about, but let's just get going. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee, and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jezerin, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the watercourses. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And so this is a, a verse that gets uh, picked out and, you know, it's a standout verse. And I just read a claim. There was a, a claim that this is the first outright declaration of monotheism in the Bible. I don't know if I agree with that statement. There's probably all sorts of stuff that makes it clear that there's only one God. Of course, God has three parts, but... This really set the people apart because at the time it was just pagans were all over the place and there were temples to all sorts of lowercase g gods and, and goddesses. And we know that when the Nephilim came down and slept with, with the women that they created mighty men that were renowned. Like the, the stories of Greek heroes and stuff. I think that all of that stuff is probably based off of real living Nephilim people, the lowercase g gods that were around the earth. Anyways, it's, it's certainly a standout verse, and we do think of God as the Alpha and the Omega a lot these days, and so is this the first mention of that? Something to look into. Okay, continuing on. And who, as I, shall call and shall declare it? and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people. And the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God, I know not any. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit, and they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know, that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a god, or molten a graven image, that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and the workmen, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together, let them stand up, yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with the tongs both worketh the coals, worketh in the coals, and fashioneth it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water, and is faint. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule. He marketh it out with a line. He fitteth, fitteth it with planes, and he marketh it out with the compass, and maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. He heweth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengtheneth of himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof and warm himself. Yea, he kindleth it, and baketh bread. Yea, he maketh a god, and worshipeth it. He maketh it a graven image, and falleth down thereto. And you still see all sorts of idolatry like this, especially in the, in the Eastern religions are very idolatrous, literally with, like, golden images and, I mean, little Buddha statues, and you go into a Thai restaurant, they have weird golden golden idolatry images of their ancestors and stuff, and oranges. They're always, 
putting the oranges there and the incense, and this is still very much alive, and traditions carry on. These, these cultures today are carrying on the idolatrous traditions of times past. <clears throat> you know, I, you go and watch these, like, ancient dancing traditions of the Thai people and stuff, and I just, my mind instantly goes back to, these are just, they're carrying on the traditions of old-time pagan temple worship stuff that was happening, and I mean, it's kind of cool, but there's also the creepy factor to it. Something about it doesn't seem right when you watch those strange Thai dancers and stuff. <clears throat> Verse 16. He burneth part thereof in the fire, with part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth roast, and is satisfied. Yea, he warmeth himself, and saith, Aha, I am warm, I have seen the fire. And the residue thereof he maketh a god, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my god. And today, we all have, I mean, hopefully not, I'm just saying, in general, in general today, we don't think of idolatry as being so prevalent, but most, I would say most humans idolize other humans. Not even, it's not even like building this mysterious trinket and then worshiping it. People just straight up worship other people today. And it's like TV people, YouTube personalities become idols. And, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> and the residue thereof, he maketh a god, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my god. They have not known nor understand, for he hath shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. And none considereth in his heart, neither is their knowledge nor understanding, to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stalk of a tree? He feedeth on ashes. A deceived, a deceived heart hath turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant. O Israel, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob, and glorified himself in Israel. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backwards, and make their knowledge foolish, that confirmeth the word of his servant, and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof that saith to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers, that saith to Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Okay, and they're just reading about this chapter. People made mention of Cyrus, and how they just... There's some confused... I don't know about if confusion is the right word. You know, scholars always have their own ideas and push it as the right thing. And there is a shift in Isaiah. I do see that once it's like now the exile in Babylon has happened. And I'm just pointing out that some people point out verse 28 and say something about Cyrus, about how maybe now Isaiah is not the author of this book anymore. But... I don't see that yet. Oftentimes, people will make claims and I'll be like, okay, I mean, I, I don't know, I guess. But just because somebody has an idea and says it doesn't mean that it has to be right. Okay, 
So getting into today's other topic is this strange building. The Spring Palace, Fort Worth, Texas. Another amazing building made allegedly in the 1800s. This one's decked out. It looks like it's a small world. I think that there is something to the whole it's a small world thing. And of course the song, it's a small world. The The earth really is smaller than people say. And not even just in a size way. It, it has a lot to do with the fake history thing that that there really was one group of people that lived all over Earth, and it was the same everywhere. It's a small world kind of has to do with, well, it's the same everywhere. You go to any any country anywhere, and it's basically the same thing. You'll find the same old world buildings, the same faked history, and the same NWO oppression. Anyways, this is a cool building that I'd never heard of this before. Yeah, the Spring Palace in Fort Worth, Texas. It's another building that they'll tell you was built quickly for a, a short event and then burned down. They claim that this was made for some sort of expo, exposition of like Texas stuff. It's like a state fair thing. When have you ever heard of somebody building a giant dome, temporary dome structure for a state fair? And this was in like the 1800s, allegedly. So no, that doesn't make sense. What makes a lot more sense is that they inherit this building and they just construct some wild tale, tale to tell you how they built it and then they just burn it down later and hope people forget about it so i don't i don't know sometimes i think they would come in and decorate the place but i don't know that they even decorated this something this is just like in that style that that reminds me of russian it's a small world type looking things People say it's like a Moorish temple. I don't know. I'm not not an expert. The design around that central star looks so interesting with the black and white zigzag designs. It it almost reminds me of the strange type of art that's on our money and stuff. The do they call it the bell epoch? I don't know. There's a type of design, like when you look at all the filigree stuff on the back of our money, like who were the people doing these designs? There's something to it. it. And it reminds me of like computer chips. When you zoom in on computer chips and look at the different pathways and stuff. Really decked out though for a little form exposition. You got your one guy, your one dude standing in front of it, one horse and buggy for a huge palace. Stick the American flag up top and, nope, it's mine now. I built it. Here, that's weird. There there used to be a statue up top and they replaced it with a flag. Quite the beautiful dome, too. So, that's it. I'm not diving deep into anything in this video. I just want to show some pretty pictures. Here's a really pretty Jewish synagogue in Nashville. Oh, I forget the name now. I'm sure if you... That looks like a unicorn horn on top. Interesting. I think this was Vine Street. And I think Vine is probably a, a word meaning old world. It's something with the... Uh, what are the colleges with the... The Ivy League, Ivy League, Vine Street. A lot of these places had, I think they had to come in and tear down vines that had totally overgrown a lot of these areas. Really old um, vine roots, big vine systems. If you've ever removed vines too, it's hard work and it sucks. You can I got a lung infection one time from cleaning out a bunch of ivy. It's a dirty job. So, same story. This is Nashville. They got these Victorian... It all looks like... It all reminds me of San Francisco. The Victorian... The tall, skinny buildings. It, it's the type of thing that you would... You would imagine an end world city when you're running out of space. When you're just starting up, you wouldn't assume people are building tight, tall buildings close together. That's like way, way later in a society when you've run out of space. We see like three cars on the road, but 
these big buildings going on and on as far as the eye can see and they're built in such a way that you would think populations are booming but then you got your three cars there and the dirt road this was a strange picture next to that which they claim is jewish that weird weird building but this one the triangular one is also strange looks out of place Christian science. They've been doing this BS science push since the last reset. Anyways, Nashville Vine Street. That's where I got some of these from. Look at that. Wow, they really don't build them like they used to. Looks patchwork. It's like it, they were building that thing over, over a long period of time. Like the center part looks so much older than the other parts. Looks patchwork. Strange design on this side, too. Look at this one. Already looks ancient. Already looking ancient so long ago. So those are some pretty pictures. Look at this one. <laughs> Got some checkerboard. Just comparing the low, low tech of these ghetto wood power lines that they stick up right away after a reset and the magnificent stone masonry buildings, it's such a disconnect. The little sign over here, dry foods. <laughs> Could you imagine building this stone masonry building and then, what is that hanging in the window right there? And then you got your little signage, dry foods. <laughs> In what reality does that make sense? Well, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. God bless everyone. Oh, wait, I, I jumped the gun. I forgot I was going to talk about Civil War really quickly. Oh, does this make sense? To build this amazing castle? And then you're sticking your ghetto telephone pole, your ghetto power line in the middle of the dirt road? You got your three people... Standing outside, like, what is going on? Is that a prim? <laughs> and this castle. Enormous. Beautiful. Already ancient. With your two people outside. Okay, this is what I said I was going to talk about at the end. Somebody asked about Civil War. I have a video on the Civil War, but YouTube took it down ages ago. And... I guess I will have to do another Civil War video in the future. But it's a Masonic hoax. Look at the hidden hand. It's just a bunch of... Gosh. The body. Such a strange body on Lincoln. The coat about to burst. It's just all a hoax. Copycat or myth. Jefferson Davis, the first president of the Confederacy, is just the same person as Abraham Lincoln. They play both sides, and they didn't even really try to hide it at all. It's like, they, they really didn't change much between Jefferson Davis and Abraham Lincoln. It's just the same person. And they do this all the time. Barack Obama is Osama bin Laden, and it's obvious, and they didn't try to hide it. The names are even the same. Osama, Osama, Obama, it's the same name even. They have been doing this for so long. This goes back, there's, they play the same tricks and they learn from one another and they're not very creative. It's uh, George Washington and the King of England at the time were the same actor too. They look the same. Okay, I have two more pictures of, of Jefferson Davis, the first president of the Confederacy and Abraham Lincoln. This is the biggest, most glaringly obvious proof that the Civil War was made up. It's so obvious that they're the same person. They play both sides. They are the same person. They literally just shave his facial hair a little different. It is the same person. Well, okay, that's it for this video. God bless.